Good morning, church. Good morning. Well, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Mike Fitzgerald. My wife Gwen is here this morning, and uh, we are glad and grateful to begin a time of being with you. And uh, my name is not Mr. Fitzgerald. That's my dad. Um, my name is Mike, Pastor Mike, whatever you'd like to call me, but I am so thankful, thrilled to be with you, looking forward to our months that we're going to be together. Uh, Jessica has given me a little bit of instruction this morning to kind of get me in line. Choir, that was gorgeous. That was gorgeous. Uh, I love a great choir, and that was beautiful. So I'm going to give you a few announcements this morning. If you want to look with me in your bulletin, just let me give you a few, reminding you of some things. First of all, shoe boxes. Uh, the deadline is coming up. It is next Sunday, November 13th. So if you don't have your shoe box in to go somewhere around the world to a child uh, who can learn about the love of Christ, uh, get that shoe box in uh, by next Sunday. Sunday. So that means if you haven't picked one up yet, they're still available. You can still pack it up this week and get it in by next week. Uh, also, uh, deadline for poinsettias is uh, next Sunday, November 13th. Uh, so if you have not ordered a poinsettia for the Christmas season, uh, please do that by next week. Coats for kids coming up. Deadline is November 20th. Uh, and one more here, I love this. Of course, I, for many of you, I think most of you know, I was pastor of Clifford Baptist Church for 40 years. And so a lot of these announcements look exactly like the announcements that I have made for all of these years. Lottie Moon Post Office, we did that for years as well. Uh, your post office is going to be officially open on Sunday, November 20th. So uh, you can raise some funds for Lottie Moon by sending Christmas cards to one another. What a great thing. Uh, also, in your bulletin, you will notice there is an enclosure. Please don't lose it. That's an updated family list for deacon ministry. So you learn your family's connection with a particular deacon, and uh, I think that's a great uh, program for deacons. Deacons, thank you for doing that uh, as you are reaching out to families within your church. So this is an updated list. Uh, and also, one more announcement, and that's coming from April this morning. So April, all yours. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Um, I have two announcements this morning. Um, first one is we have, we are so blessed and so thankful. We were just talking to Pastor Mike and he, as he was getting to know the kids and kind of meeting everyone up front. Our children's church group is growing more and more downstairs, and we are absolutely excited about that. Um, just a reminder, the age group is kindergarten through fifth grade. I know as I have a middle schooler myself, that time as we transition for when to stay upstairs and start sitting through the worship service um, is difficult. So what actually um, Joan had worked on before we left is, before she left was, um, I've got a little form here. It's down in the front pew and I'm gonna keep copies down here. Um, for anybody, of course, it's geared more towards the, the younger group, but a lot of just kind of questions to help follow along. So if you have somebody that's in that age group that's kind of staying up, um, and you want something to kind of help them follow along and pay attention during the service, they're going to be down here in the front. So I just wanted to tell you a little bit about that. Um, also, I am working on our nursery schedule for 2023. So if you are on the nursery schedule, I'm not going to come ask you if you want to stay on it. You got to come tell me you want to come off of it. <laughs> so, um, if and all joking aside, if if you are not able to serve, I know I've talked to some people about it um, and kind of switching some things around, and I've made notes for that. So, um, if you plan to stay on it, then you will stay on it. If you want to be added to it, that would be great. We would love to have more volunteers. Um, and, if, and all joking aside, if you do need to come off, just come and grab me. I'll be up here today and let me know. Uh, it usually rotates about every nine weeks. We always go through cycles. All of our kids are getting bigger, so our nursery is getting smaller. Um, so I won't need as many each time, so we'll be able to start stretching out. And you may go nine to ten weeks having to serve versus the seven to eight weeks before. So I can kind of stretch out the rotation a little bit. So come see me about that if you'd like to be added or subtracted from the list. Thanks so much. Another good morning to you. Good morning. First of all, I got a real praise. Last Sunday we announced we had 44 people in our morning Bible study, also called Sunday School. Saw a 30% increase this week up to 57. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Now I think another 30% increase will take us about 72 next week. 
and there's more than 72 sitting in here now. So start at 930. If you are interested in coming to morning Bible study, as I said last week, it just ties so well in sometimes with the, uh, the message that one's going to deliver. And it really prepares you and it gives you an opportunity to have some back and forth discussion and, and really understanding the word so much better. So we encourage you to come to morning Bible study starting at 930. Please see me if you want to come and not sure which room to go into. But if you come, just go in whatever room you want to go into. It'll work out fine. Second thing, another deadline. I've asked the section heads to turn in their budget request two weeks from today. Uh, by the 20th, I believe that is. Uh, turn that in to me. The Finance Committee will meet on the 22nd. And then we'll prepare uh, adjusting the 2023 budget uh, for the next business meeting in December. So again, if you've got a request, if you want to spend some money, something you want to do for the Lord, let the section heads know, certainly let me know if you wish, and we'll uh, do our best to integrate that into the next year's budget. Thank you very much, and God bless. Any other thing last moment? Let's pray together. Our Father, our God, thank you that we are in your house today. Thank you that Scripture tells us we are glad when it's time to go to the house of the Lord. Father, tonight, uh, today, Father, we just thank you that you are with us as we gather here. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that we worship Jesus Christ, the one who loves us, the one who gave his life that we might be saved and forgiven and given eternal life, Lord. We worship you. We thank you, Lord. If there's one person in this sanctuary who has never come to you, Father, today, that invitation will be given. But we pray your blessing and we pray your hand upon this worship service, Lord. Bless every person who is here. And we know, Father, that as we come together, you are with us and you love us and you will touch our hearts and prepare us for the week that is to come. This moment in your house today, Lord, is our tithe of time before a new week begins. And we thank you that we begin our week in the best way possible by giving honor and blessing and glory and praise to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So bless us in this hour, we pray. We love you. We're thanking you, Lord, that we are in your house. Bless every section of uh, study and worship of uh, First Baptist Church Monroe. Father, thank you for a good, strong Sunday school. I pray it will continue to grow. I pray that our worship service will lift you up. We love you and thank you for this time we share in Jesus' precious name. Let's stand and sing to the Lord. Hymn number 435, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
Our next hymn this morning is number 441, Take Time to Be Holy. <coughs> heading in the bulletin that we're going to worship together through prayer. And I know that there are many among us, maybe every one of us has something or someone we need to bring before the Lord in prayer and ask for blessing and healing and strength and comfort. And so as we go to the Lord together this morning, we pray for God's blessing and God hears every word of prayer. And so may we bow our heads and come to him and ask his blessing in these moments. Our Lord, our God, as we approach your throne of grace on this Sunday morning, we come thanking you, Lord, that this is our time to gather before you with heads bowed and with spirits that are contrite before you and asking for your blessing and your grace and your will to be done in our lives, in the life of this church family, Lord. And we come before you, Lord, asking for your presence and all that we do and every step that we take in this week to come. Father, we pray that you will be walking with us. Thank you, Lord, that this hymn, I was struck by the words. I've sung it so many times, and yet the words struck me this morning. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. How true that is. The world just rushes by us, Lord, and we get involved in things of the world. We have to because we live here. And yet, Father, we pray that we will be different, that we will take time to bow in prayer, that we will take time to come before you in your word, that we will take time to ask how you want to use our lives, Father, for you are the one who gives us purpose and blessing and looking forward to life that you are walking with us. And so today, Father, thank you for this moment that we're taking time to be holy that we're taking time before your throne of grace. We're taking time to recognize the one who gives us life and who gives us direction. The world rushes on, and when we walk out of these front doors, we will get into that rush again. But I pray, Father, that we will always take time to give to you. Father, we take time this morning to lift before you our prayer needs, our prayer concerns. And I'm sure before me and behind me that there are many concerns, Father, May we just take a moment of silence that we might individually lift our concern to you. If it's a person in our life or something we're going through, hear our prayer in this moment.
We thank you, O oh God, that you hear us individually. And we thank you that you hear us collectively that we might follow you. That we might experience the healing that only you can give as the good shepherd and the great physician. And so this morning, Lord, we just give these moments to you as we take time to be holy. As we take time to just bow before you and ask for your blessing now. Thank you for this church family, Lord. Thank you that Gwen and I can be a part of the church family here, Lord. And we want to be a part, we want to be a, a, just a, a part of the family in these months to come, Lord. That we might be a, a help, that we might be a prayer support, that we might be fellow ministers together. And so, Father, thank you in this first morning that we share. I'm so thankful, and Gwen is too, that we might be here and that we might worship you together through Jesus Christ our Lord. Father, use us, speak to us, lead someone to Jesus through us in this week to come. We give this morning to you, and we thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
Well, First Baptist Church in Monroe, I don't know if you know, you are blessed with a great choir. Uh, what a wonderful choir. What beautiful music. So I'm so glad, again, to be with you. Gwen and I are so happy that we can share some time, some months with you. Uh, let me give you a little news from the home front. Uh, she and I became grandparents for the third time uh, just two days ago. Here we go. Uh, our son and his wife uh, have two little boys. They are four and five years old right now. Oh, I'm sorry, three and five. You got corrected from the pew back there. <laughs> three and five years old, two little boys, and they're quite a handful. And now we have a little girl. Uh, her name is Sadie Virginia. She, jo she joins Noah and James. Uh, so I've gotten really good at spoiling boys. So now I've got to relearn how to spoil a little girl. I think it'll come quite naturally to me. Don't think I'll have any problem with that. But we're happy for that news from the home front. Uh, and I am so very grateful and thankful that the Lord led us together, that I can share some time and some ministry with you. And we want to be a part of the family. We want to be a part of the ministry here. I look forward to that. Uh, and I've had a long, long relationship uh, with First Baptist Church in Monroe. Uh, I've known many of your pastors along the way. Uh, I've, I've known Reverend Rockwell over the years, uh, Charles Anderson. I've known Charles. He and I did some weddings and sadly a couple of funerals together. Uh, and I was able to visit with him in his home uh, shortly before he went to heaven. And so I'll remember that visit always. Uh, Glenn Coleman. Glenn and I have been friends for a long, long time, well past 25 years. Uh, and I sure love him, and I am so grateful for his ministry here, and he has certainly led this church in the ways of the Lord over the years, and I'm very thankful for my relationship with him. Uh, one of the things I have to tell you some years ago, some of you may remember this, but some years ago, Glenn invited me to come and preach a night of revival here, and I had to call him earlier that day and said, Glenn, I have laryngitis, and I can barely squeak. I can talk, but it's really not very pleasant. Uh, he said, you know, well, you just come right on. You know, Glenn, you come right on. So, so I came that night right here. Uh, I was ready to preach. And so before I preached, I said, Glenn, since my voice is so weak, why don't you read the scripture for the night? And then I will preach the sermon. He said, fine. So he read the scripture in that beautiful, bassy, resonant Jim Reeves voice, if you're an old country music fan. Uh, he read that scripture so beautiful. And then I got up with this little squeak of a voice and preached the rest of the sermon. But I, it scarred me after hearing him read that scripture. I love Glenn. I have also come to know Brian and Joan Claybo so well and their little one. And we pray God's blessing and leading on them as they step out into the future as to God uh, st sets the path for them in these days that are ahead. But I am excited about sharing the next month with you. Grateful that you invite me and allow me to stand in this sacred place. I do not take that lightly that you have invited me to this very sacred place uh, behind this pulpit. Uh, and it is a great, a great place of honor, but also a great place of responsibility. And I know that as we open God's word together, we want to be truthful in the way that we share it together in the way that we hear his truth revealed to us. Uh, and as you begin your search for your next pastor, I know it's a rather daunting process, but God has already chosen that man. He has already chosen in the heart and in the mind of God. And so our prayer today is that, Lord, you will lead us to that person that you have already chosen for us. And what's so interesting is somewhere on the other end of the spectrum, there is a man somewhere in this world that is praying, Lord, lead me to my next church. Lead me to my next step of ministry. And so our prayer together is that we will be faithful that those two paths will cross in God's timing, in God's will, in God's blessing. So just remember this morning, the Lord already has the plan. He already knows what's going to happen. 
And we just want to follow his timing. We want to follow his will, follow his blessing in that. And the reason he allows us time between these uh, times, these days that we're waiting for that pastor to come is so that we will grow in prayer and so that we will grow in faith and in faithfulness to follow him in all things. He asks us sometime to wait. In fact, that's kind of the key to the sermon today. He asks us sometime to wait and to follow him. I know it's a great journey for the church yet ahead, but we know the Lord is going to grow you, me, and us together. He's going to grow that pastor that is yet to come. God is strengthening this church for your future, for days ahead, for ministry ahead, for people to be saved who are yet in the future. He always has the plan. We just need to follow him. And that's where we commit our lives to him today. Now, I'm going to start us in a sermon series. I only have three Sundays before Christmas and Advent begin. Uh, but I'm going to start us in this sermon series and then pick it up at the first of the year. So I can't finish it in three Sundays. That is absolutely for sure. But we're going to walk through the book of Philippians together. There's a reason that I want us to travel the book of Philippians. I've chosen this for a sermon series because I believe this was Paul's favorite church. Paul loved this church, and it is church at its best. And I think it's always good for us to see how the Bible instructs us as church to live our lives and to conduct our ministries. And so we're going to study the book of Philippians together. It's going to take quite a few Sundays, but we will walk through it step by step and verse by verse. Uh, now, the Philippian church was not a perfect church. In fact, in the fourth chapter, you will find that there are two women, Euodius and Syntyche, who had some dispute amongst one another. It wasn't a perfect church. had some things going on that needed to be ironed out. But since the first century when the church was born, there's never been a perfect church. You know why? There's too many human beings in churches. And we know that we need to seek the Lord's guidance, forgiveness, grace, and blessing as we follow him as the church. Because we need his leadership. We need his guidance. We need his blessing as we follow him. But the church in Philippi was a church in ministry. It was a church that made a mark on the world. And I believe that's one of the healthy reasons that we need to study this church in Philippi. We're going to study these three Sundays, move into the Advent Christmas season, come back to Philippians after the first of the year. So actually today, we're not going to even begin in the book of Philippians as we open Scripture. I want you to take your Bible, turn with me to the history book of your New Testament, the book of Acts. I want you to go there. I want you to go to chapter 16 in the book of Acts. If you don't have a Bible today, bring on one with you in Sundays to come. But go to Acts chapter 16 in your New Testament. If you've studied Paul, you know that he was arguably the greatest missionary and man of God of all time. It's interesting about his history. He at first was a staunch Jew who killed Christians and wanted to stamp out the church and any mark of Jesus Christ on the world. He wanted to get rid of the church. He wanted to get rid of Christians. However, there came a time when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. And within the onsetting few days, he came to Jesus as his Lord and his Savior, and his life turned around 180 degrees. No longer did he want to stamp out the church, but he wanted to establish the church around the world. He wanted people to be saved. He wanted people to follow Jesus as Lord and Savior. He became on fire as a man of God and as a missionary of the gospel. After he met Christ, his life changed. And that should be true for every single one of us. When Jesus lives in your life, your life should be changed. Anyone who says, my life hadn't changed since the time I met Jesus, something's wrong there. They need to go back to square one. He will change your life. He has changed my life. You know the old country song, I'm just an old chunk of coal, but I'll be a diamond one day. He's still working on me. He's still working on every one of us who knows him as Lord and Savior. But he changes our life for the better. He, he gives us purpose. He gives us a reason to get up in the morning. And he gives us a hope of eternal life. He changes our life for the good, for the better. So as you study the book of Acts, the history book of your New Testament, you will find Paul there predominantly. In fact, it starts out with Peter and then moves on to Paul in the book of Acts. But you will see Paul in the book of Acts, and you will notice as you read through that Paul took three major missionary journeys 
three journeys for the Lord Jesus, establishing churches, calling people to be saved. Now, on his first journey, he teamed up with a man whose name was Barnabas, a great man of God as well, an encourager and a supporter. And Paul and Barnabas went on that first missionary journey together. They traveled their home country. They traveled the continent of Asia, the continent of the Holy Land, the continent where they grew up. So they were really in their home territory on the first journey as they stayed on the continent of Asia. So Paul and Barnabas and probably other team members stayed right in their home territory as they made that first missionary journey. And they preached the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the continent of Asia. And people were saved and churches were established. That was Paul's way of ministry. Once he came to a town or a community or a city and people were saved under his preaching the gospel, he would take that group of saved people, however large or small they were, and he would form them into a church. And whenever he traveled away, he left a church behind of those people who had been saved. So baby ch Christians and, and churches that were brand new in these communities being left as the mission team went through first mission journey on the continent of Asia, Paul and Barnabas and team saw many people saved and many churches established. Well, after the first missionary journey was done, Paul and Barnabas decided it was time for another mission journey. So they were getting ready to go on their second missionary journey. However, Paul and Barnabas had a disagreement. They had a disagreement over a young man whose name was John Mark. That's a whole nother sermon. I'm not going to go there this morning. But they couldn't agree on whether to take John Mark or not. So Paul and Barnabas had such sharp words that they actually divided and they went their separate ways. It's interesting to me that God used an argument to double the mission group in the world. Two mission teams went out instead of one, but it was based on an argument. However, it all is settled over the time to come. But Paul and Barnabas went their different directions so for the second missionary journey, then, Paul paired up with a man whose name was Silas, along with some other mission team members, and they struck out on mission journey number two. Now, hang with me. So they had been on the continent of Asia, first mission journey. They traveled the continent. They had preached the gospel. They had formed churches. So for the second mission journey, Paul said, I know what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to retrace our steps, stay on the continent of Asia, and go back to all the churches that we've established to see how they're doing. But God changed their plan. The plan for that trip did not work out. Look at Acts chapter 16, verses 6 and 7. By the way, I have used the King James throughout my ministry. Sometimes I may uh, use another version, but I, I hang, you use the version you're comfortable with. That's fine, but uh, I'll, I'll use this in the pulpit probably most of the time because it's the one I've used all of my ministry. So Acts chapter 16, look at verse 6. Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, after they were come to Mysia, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. Okay, so here they are getting ready to go on their second big missionary journey. They were going to travel throughout Asia once again, touch base with all of those churches, but God said no. First of all, Paul thought, okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. Well, our mission team is going to start out and we're going to go south. We're going to go to Galatia and see all of those churches that have been established there. And scripture says, God said, no, you cannot go south. So, Paul said, okay, well, if that's the case, then if God says don't go south, then I guess we're supposed to go north toward Bithynia. And so as they prepared to go north, God said, I don't want you going north. So, so God had given them a dilemma. When they had decided to go south, God said no. When they decided to go north, God said no. So Paul said, where were we supposed to go? We're not supposed to go in either of those two directions, so where are we supposed to go? God kept saying, that's not my plan. And Paul did not know where God wanted them to be. So at this point, what did God want them to do? He wanted them to stop and wait and pray for his direction. You know, Paul was a man on fire. I don't think Paul was a patient man at all. I think he loved to go. He, lo he just loved to preach. He wanted to see people saved. He didn't sit still long at all. And yet here's where God is telling him, you stay put right there and listen to my will for your future. 
and where I want your mission team to be on this second journey. Listen. Stop and wait and pray. You know, there are times, 2,000 years later now, where that's still God's direction to us. Just slow down and stop and pray and see where I'm going to direct you next. And may I say to you, First Baptist Church of Monroe, 2,000 years later, I think that's where you are right now. And I want to be with you in that. I'm not directing you from the pulpit. I'm saying, as part of the family, I think that's where the church is right now. That God is saying, just stop right here. Let's get on our knees and let's pray for the future. Let's pray for the next leader, the next pastor. Let's pray for the next steps of ministry. Let's pray for the next steps of your journey as a church as we share these days together. You know, in days ahead, we will worship together. In days ahead, we are going to celebrate Advent and Christmas together. It's going to be a great celebration, I know that. In days to come, we are going to continue to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. My prayer is in our days to come, we will see people saved in this sanctuary. My prayer is that we are church as the Lord wants us to be church. But also in this moment of time, we need to be on our knees. And we need to be asking God, what's your plan? What's our next step? Where's the direction? As we seek our next pastor, Lord, we want your direction to that man of God. Keep us directed in the next steps of ministry that you have for us in our future days. In the midst of all we are continuing to do, we are to pray and wait and ask for his blessing and his leading in these days. Now, going back to Paul's team. They knew that they needed a word from God in order to know where to go. God had said, don't go north, don't go south. So Paul said, we just got to wait for where God wants us to be. And the word did come. Paul had a vision in the night, a word that came from God. So look at Acts 16, verses 9 and 10. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Okay, so here's the breakthrough of God's will. And the mission team getting ready to go on their second journey. God said, don't go north, don't go south. Just listen. So here's the breakthrough. Here's the vision that Paul got where God spoke and told them where to go. Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing on the seashore saying, Come here. We need the gospel here. Bring the team here. Well, that's, that's a great thing. But here's the question. Where's Macedonia? Macedonia is Europe. Macedonia is not the continent of Asia. God was asking the mission team to switch continents and to go to Europe with the gospel of the living Lord Jesus Christ, to go to a territory where Jesus' name had probably never been heard, to go to a place where people had never given their hearts to Jesus, to go to a place where there wasn't such a thing as a church. So God called them off of one continent to go to another, to get on the ship and travel 150 miles across the Aegean Sea and to get off on the continent of Europe and to preach the gospel there. Now, one of the most important words that I want to direct your attention to, and if you mark in your Bible, in Acts chapter 16, verse 10, there is one word that is very important. It's immediately. And that means this mission team, they didn't question God, they didn't hesitate about His will, immediately they prepared, got on the boat, and sailed to go to Macedonia, to go where God told them to go. Immediately, without question, they followed the will of God. They sail to Europe and they dock on a new continent. They step off a boat into the first city they come to and the city's name is Philippi. The first city that they disembark on the continent of Europe. Now, what do they find? Okay, look with me. Acts chapter 16, verses 11 through 15. So, they've landed in Europe. Here they are. Therefore, loosing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. 
And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Okay, so here's the breakthrough. When the team gets to Europe, they find a woman's prayer meeting. Wouldn't you know, the first group they find is the WMU. <laughs> Always there first. Prayer meeting led by a wealthy woman whose name was Lydia. And the women were praying simply for someone to come and to lead them into the truth of God. And here comes a ship over the horizon docking right there in their city. And as Paul and his team speak about Jesus Christ, Lydia is saved, and then she goes to her whole, her whole home, her whole household, and all of her household is saved and baptized in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as a result of that prayer meeting right there in Philippi, with Lydia and family being saved, many others gave their heart to Jesus Christ, and a church was born in the city of Philippi. And that little band of new Christians became the very first church on the continent of Europe. Isn't it amazing how God moved a mission team from home country to foreign missions? And the first church of Europe was established right there in that city. So beginning next week, we're going to study Paul's words. We will open the book of Philippians and begin studying Paul's words to this church that he founded and a church which he loved. And I believe he came to love as one of his favorite churches of all ministry. But as we close today with that church being established on a brand new continent, looking at scripture about a church 2,000 years ago, I want to plant two seeds in your heart as we close today. Two seeds that I believe are very important if God and as God carries us forward as a church in the days that are to come, as he's asking us to stop and to wait and to pray for his will. Here are two seeds I want to plant in your heart. Seed number one, will you personally, and it doesn't matter if you are not a teenager yet or you're teen years or in your 20s or on through senior years like I am now, so I can't hardly say that, but I know it's true. No matter what your age is, will you pray every day for your church? Every day will you pray for your church? Every day will you pray for your pulpit committee? That they follow the will of God as they make some very important decisions in days ahead. But will you, family of Christ, will each one of us individually pray for First Baptist Church of Monroe, that we wait for God's provision and that we expectantly know it's going to happen. We just want His will to be done in our church. We pray for His next step. Will you make that commitment to Him today? Maybe there's someone here who will come to this altar this morning. I'll, I'll be glad to pray with you if you want to come. I will be up front. But if you just want to come physically to this altar and begin that commitment of prayer, and just say, Lord, I'm laying your church at the altar here and asking for your blessing, and this is my commitment that I'm going to pray for your church every single day. Now, I'm not going to twist your arm. We're not going to sing 43 verses of Just As I Am to get you to this altar. But if you want to come, you come. And make that a public statement that you're making that commitment that you will pray for your church and pray for your pulpit committee every day. If you come to the altar of your heart, that's good. Just make that commitment, church, that we pray every single day for what God has in store for this church family. You know, I, I attended a state Baptist meeting many years ago, and the guest for that meeting was the Christian comedian Jerry Clower. You remember Jerry Clower? Shoot up here amongst us. One of us has got to have some relief. Well, as he went through all of his comedy and all the funny things that he had to say, and he was hilarious that night, I'll have to say, when he finished up all of his funny stories, he said this, and I'll never forget it. 
He said, folks, before I leave you tonight, you know, he had this big voice, booming voice. Said, folks, I want to leave you tonight with two words. These are the most important words that I can bring you. Out of everything I've done tonight, here are the two words that I want to leave you with, and I want you to remember them, and I want you to act on them every single day. Here they are. Prayer works. And he said it so loud that it just resounded in the rafters. Prayer works. And I know that's true. When we call on the God of heaven, the God who loves us, the God who established this church, the God who leads us day by day, we know that prayer works. Will you pray every day? Here's the second little seed that I plant in your heart this morning. The church at Philippi really had humble beginnings. A group of women in a prayer meeting. And a few of them were saved, and then others were saved, like a Philippian jailer. All along the way, there were others saved. But that little humble church became the greatest church of Europe, the first church of Europe. Thousands upon thousands, perhaps millions of Europeans have been saved in 2,000 years, and it all harkens back to that mother church in Philippi, where it began on that continent. God used that little church in a in a, an amazing way and God can use this congregation as a beacon for the Lord Jesus Christ I can tell you driving from Clifford especially to the hospital and nursing homes in Lynchburg I have passed this church literally thousands of times in 40 years and so many times that I have passed First Baptist Church and as I said I've, I've had many uh, relationships with folks here and with your pastors here I looked up on this hill and thought what a great place for a church to be. Sandwiched here, you know, south of Amherst and, and, and going on into Lynchburg. What a great place for a church to be right here on Route 29. I got to tell you, folks, you have a great place for a church to be. And I know that you want to be that beacon that shines the love and the life of Jesus Christ. And I believe that we can touch an entire community with the love of Christ from this place. I know you have in days past. And I know God has used you effectively in so many ways, but he also has a future for you. Beginning today forward, there's a future for you and for us. He has a great plan as you, you being a beacon for the Lord Jesus. Never undersell yourself as to what God can do with a church surrendered to him, with a church that prays for his will. He is still a God of miracles. You know, it's really not about our strength. It's not about how smart we are. Not, it's not even about how deep Bible students we are. The truth is, it's all about how powerful our God is and what God can do when he puts his hand on a church body. And I believe that not only can this church change a community, but if he sees so fit, we can change the world. For him. Pray for the Lord to use this church to change this world, beginning right here in our little Jerusalem, this place that he has put this church. God bless you, First Baptist Church Monroe. The future is in his hands, and we pray for his will to be done. Amen? Amen. Now, before I close this sermon, you're going to hear this every sermon I preach. I promise you. In fact, when I do weddings, I include this. When I do funerals, I include this. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, I want you to know how deeply he loves you. He loves you so much that he went to the cross and he laid down his life and he shed his blood that you and I might be forgiven of sin. And the Bible says in Romans 3.23 that all of us sin and all of us fall short of the glory of God. So even though I don't know you, I know you need him. So today, if you've never come to Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he has waited for you. And he's waiting for you this moment to say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and I'm sorry. That's called repentance. I'm sorry for what I've done against you. And I come to you as my Savior, and I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to walk with me. I ask you to change my life. I ask you to prepare me that home in heaven that you spoke about in John 14. I want to be yours. I want to be your son, your daughter today. I come to you as my Savior. This morning, if you don't know him, this is your moment that you can say yes to him. And if you come, he will not turn you away. That's the Bible's promise.
God bless you in that. Church, God bless us as we follow his will in these days to come. Let's pray together. Now, Father, our God, thank you for these precious moments that we share together. Thank you, Lord, for the honor of being invited to be a, a part of the church and to be at this pulpit, Lord. It's a very serious commitment, and it's also a, a very great joy. I pray that you will bless this church in amazing ways in these days ahead as we simply stop, wait, bow, and pray for your will to be done. We love you, and we trust you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We're going to stand together and sing one final hymn, uh, which is Footsteps of Jesus. So let's stand. If there's a decision you want to make, something you want to make public, some need that you want the Lord to, to meet in your life, you come as we stand together, as we sing it. God's house. Amen? Amen. Boy, what a great song to end with. We will follow the footsteps of Jesus wherever they go. And that's our prayer from this day forward. We ask Carrie, if he would, to come and dismiss us with a word of prayer. God bless you, church. Looking forward to spending the days with you. Thank you, brother. Let us pray. Father God, what a blessing it is to be in your house today to hear your word. Thank you for the seeds that have been planted, dear Lord. That, that first seed being that we will pray every day, every day for our pulpit committee, search committee, for our next pastor, dear Lord, and may our paths cross according to thy will with a new pastor to be at this church. We thank you for Mike, dear Lord, just the message he brings. He's so much excitement, and you've already answered the first prayer in our interim situation. And Lord, we thank you for the second seed that you've given us, the place you have given us on this earth. You've given us this Garden of Eden, if you will, dear Lord. This is our place we should take care of, our community, starting here amongst these, inside these walls. But as we leave, Lord, we take it outside of these walls and spread the good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, so that others will come forward to you 
And then as we go beyond this community, on out extension to, to the world, just as Paul did, Lord, did. Thank you so much for each and every one here. And dear God, just thank you for your love and blessings. And as Mike said, we always say thank you for your, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who came to walk among us to tell us the things we needed to know, to have eternal life with you, dear Lord, at the throne. Thank you for the sacrifice of him on the cross, dear God, so that our sins can be forgiven and we can have that eternal life with you. And thank you for the resurrection to show, dear Lord, that there's life everlasting in your home, dear Lord. Again, be with each one as we go here. Bless them. We, provide, we ask that you give them good health, dear Lord, and strength and courage to do what needs to be done to show that Jesus loves us. In his name I pray. Amen. God bless you.